Hello friends and welcome to session five, our fifth and our final session on the rule of life. And I'm going to encourage you uh, at the end of this session not to be done with developing your rule of life. In fact, I think some of the, the more thoughtful work is only just beginning because as we've read through uh, Ken Shikimatsu's book, uh, God and My Everything, hopefully you've been thinking about certain areas that you go, yeah, I, I need a, a good habit here that will help me be a better follower of Jesus. And so what you're going to do now is, after you have all these random habits that you want to develop, kind of pull them together in a framework. Again, there's some great examples at the end of Ken Shigematsu's book. His table of contents is a really good um, format for grouping some of those things together. Uh, my rule of life, and, and I've actually marked it as my rule of life for this year because I'm, I'm continuing to tweak it and some things will evolve. But I've divided it into work, uh, renewal, practices, relationships, and resources. But that's what makes sense to me. You need to find something that, that makes sense to your mind. Now, the one exception to this would be, as you've developed some rules of life, um, maybe there's only a dozen of them. You know, Maybe there's only 10 of them, and you don't need to group them together, but you just kind of have maybe your personal you know, top 10 list of here are the things that, that I want to do, here are the habits that I want to develop to be a good follower of Christ. So for this session, uh, you should have read pages 169 through 217. It's the very last section on reaching out. And we're going to talk about three things today. And these are, are things that we should be doing every day. Okay, one is work, well, with the exception of Sabbath. Work, having an earthly impact, and having an eternal impact. Okay, so we're going to talk about those three areas. And again, uh, the purpose of this session is just to prompt your thinking in developing your own rule of life. Uh, let's talk about work, and work ties in to so many different areas in life. And so I think it would be very wise, uh, especially you know, for our waking life, most of us are, are working you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day, just to have some rules, some guidelines about when we work and when we don't work. And we've seen this trend come and go as, as email was able to follow us home, where people started taking work home. Now, uh, a lot of companies are forbidding people to work at home because they realize there's this law of diminishing returns, that if you're always on, you're never off, then your, your productivity just kind of dips down low. And so to set some guidelines for how you work, one of the things I do, and I've discovered this in my own work, that uh, with any task, if I set a time parameter for it, I, I typically can get it done. Um, but if I don't set a time parameter, it takes, it takes a lot of time to get it accomplished. For instance, when I write a message, I usually give myself about two hours to do that. I say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write in mean, two hours. But if I have all day, if I say, I have nothing else on my schedule today, that same writing that would have taken two hours now takes eight hours. You know, by just setting some limits on it, to say, you know what, this is the time I'm giving to it, you can get most things done. And for Sabbath, um, I want to take Fridays off, and so I plan my work in order to try to get as much of it done before Friday, get it off my plate, get it out of my mind. And so by setting some deadlines, now, that's the way I work, uh, but I think the principle there holds that, that you'll, you'll fill up whatever container for that work, that you, whatever space and time you give it, okay? I also want to point out here a great uh, rule of life that the Benedictine monks have. And again, I've referred to the, the rule of St. Benedict. In Latin, the phrase is ora et labora, prayer and work. And for the Benedictines, prayer and work are not separate. They're the same thing. That prayer and work have become so intertwined in their lives that their prayer is their work. That's the most productive thing that they do. And their work becomes a prayer that they offer to God. And so that phrase, that Latin phrase, is actually on my rule of life, that I, I need to realize as a pastor the most important thing I can do uh, is pray, but, but all the work that I do is an act of prayer, giving it up to God. Okay, So you need to think about what, what are some rules of life, what are some habits you develop um, with your work, because if we don't set some habits, some good habits, we get really sloppy with our work. and. We experience diminishing productivity. We're bringing work home with us. We're not enjoying what we're doing, just to, to set some, some boundaries for that. Now let's talk about earthly impact for just a moment. And in Ken Shigematsu's book, he talks here about social justice. Um, and, and I'll say, I can't remember if I read this in his book or if I picked this up somewhere else. When it comes to social justice and doing good, 
let me encourage you to choose one thing. Okay, there, there are so many things that can draw your attention. You can try to be involved in, in too many things and really have no earthly impact to choose that one thing. And I'm going to agree with Cal Newport. Passion should not be our guide. We say, well, I want to do this because I'm passionate about it. Ah. Instead of looking at passion, we need to look at our ability. You know, what has God equipped you to do? You may be passionate about a certain area that God did not equip you to do. So do you have the ability and do you have the availability to meet that particular need? So what I'm saying here sounds very countercultural. Don't follow your passions. <laughs> don't, don't follow your passions. Follow the abilities, the gifts that God has given you. So if we don't choose one thing, I mean, just think about the, the topics that are at the forefront of the American consciousness right now immigration, abortion, sex trafficking, hunger, all these things are important, right? All of them are important issues, but if you try to do them all, you're going to stretch yourself really thin. I start by saying, God, where have you given me the, the, the gifts, the abilities, and the availability to help in a certain way and to focus your efforts? So as a part of your rule of life, I would say, what is an area that you decide to give yourself away? And don't just, don't just guess at it. Maybe you, know, you experiment with a few things. You try to be sensitive to God's Spirit. Uh, here's, here's a statement I'm, I'm really... Um, I was about to say it sounds kind of negative. I'm tired of hearing. I guess there's no other way to say that, that. That a person sees a need and they go, Oh, the church ought to do something about that. My reply now is, You are the church. Do something about that. All right? It doesn't have to be a program. It doesn't have to be something officially sanctioned by the church. You are the body of Christ. So to find that area where you are available and able to serve and to do it. So every day we ought to be working. Every day we ought to be concerned with having an earthly impact. And by the way, just because you are available and able to do something, don't expect everyone to have that same sense of enthusiasm as you do. And certainly don't shame people if they don't share your calling to a particular area. You know, we each have our callings. We each need to listen to the Lord Say, well, you know, if you're not, not following what I'm concerned about, that you're not really walking with God. No, they probably are walking with God. Just he's leading in a different direction. Okay. So now let's talk about the eternal impact. And this is where we come down to our witness in Jesus Christ. I would really have you pay attention to the graph that Ken Shigematsu gives on page 204, that, that little pyramid that sharing our faith really does have four components to it word, that, that we're ready to share what God is doing in our life. And, and here's my encouragement to you. Um, don't think of having something to say. Just have something to say. What, what is God doing in your life lately? And, and when the topic comes up in a conversation, especially somebody who doesn't know Christ, you're just ready for, in a very natural way to say, here's what God is doing in my life lately. So we share by word. We share by life or our character. Uh, listen, if, if your character is not lining up, and none of us are perfect, but if your life, if your character is opposite that of a follower of Jesus, please don't tell them you're a follower of Jesus. You're actually going to set some people back, right? If you are openly practicing dishonesty in your business and you expect to be an effective witness, in fact, you will turn people away from the gospel. So our words and our character must match. And let me say, you're not expected to be perfect as a Christian. We're not perfect, but we should always be making progress. So we have word, life, deed, that we are to, to take certain actions. We are to take certain initiative in helping people. And that energy comes from being a follower of Jesus. And then the fourth part on this pyramid is one that we can't contribute. We have our, our words, our lives, our deeds, but then there are signs. Okay, this is, this is something that we don't bring to the table. This is what God does. That every now and then there's events that happen in people's life that can't be explained outside the existence of God. And it's when God gives those signs and gets people's attention, that's where we step forward with our word and our life and our deed and we're clear witnesses as to the life of Christ that continues in us. So these are things that we do every day. Uh, we work every day. We want to have an, an earthly impact on the lives of others, a positive impact. And we want to have an internal impact on the life of others. To have certain rules that just um, that put us in a place where we're ready 
to do those things every single day. So I want to put a bow on this whole teaching series on habits and, and having the rule of life. Again, we form our habits and then our habits form us. You are a person of habits whether you want to be or not. Uh, the reason that you eat what you do and, and the, the reason that you drive the way you do, all these things are based on habits. And it's to be intentional about our habits. That we form certain habits because we know those habits will form us to be more like Christ. A few weeks ago, I used the story about Emmett Smith, played for the Dallas Cowboys back in the day, running back. And when he was young, he said, I could make all these fancy moves and look really good for the crowds. He said, but as I got older... I didn't have that kind of energy. I didn't have that kind of elasticity with my body. And so I needed to be very intentional with every move. Every move I made made had a purpose to it. Every habit you develop has a purpose. So what I would encourage you to do after reading Ken Shigematsu's book and after being prompted through these videos and what he's written, to take all of these random habits, these rules of life, and try to pull them together in a way that makes sense in your mind. Again, how you format that is completely up to you. And then what I would encourage you to do is once you have them in a format that you understand, um, review them. Maybe at first it's once a day, then it's once a week, then it's once a month. Uh, we need a couple of things. We need to fine-tune some of these uh, rules of life. I know on, on my list, I've edited just about every one of them. Again, for my mind, they make sense, and I'm trying to, to develop a habit in a certain direction. So you need some fine-tuning. But also, you can't, just can't write a rule of life and go, okay, there it is, got it, you know, set. We need to remember. And by reminding ourselves on a regular basis, oh, yeah, here's that habit that I'm trying to develop, boy, I'd, I'd forgotten about that. I need to, to give a little more effort there. And again, this is not about winning God's approval. This is about developing habits that help us to continue to become until we completely become like Jesus Christ. So thank you for joining me for this study in the month of August 2020. My prayer is that as we develop these habits, it will walk with us, especially as we get ready to go back to school, uh, this fall as our kids go back to school as we start another another church here that these habits will help us to continue to become until we completely become like jesus christ thanks so much for joining us for this study i hope it it developed uh, and deepened your relationship with the lord and uh, i'll see you soon bye-bye